Hey, I'm Nick Boy, and welcome to Pocket for Monday the 8th of February. Today on the show, wet bears, portal drug trips, and where did all the demos go? All right, here's what's been making headlines. The Binding of Isaac has been rejected from the iOS App Store for its depictions of violence against children. The game's publisher shared a photo of Apple's rejection letter which reads, Your app contains content or features that depict violence towards or abuse of children, which is not allowed on the App Store. There's no indication at this point if the publishers will contest Apple's ruling. The ANZ Regional Final of the Halo World Championships took place in Sydney over the weekend. Six teams descended upon the Australian Technology Park to fight for one of two spots in the next stage of the international tournament. In the end, it was Team Immunity and XL5 who won the honours of representing the region coming in first and second place respectively. Both teams will appear at the preliminary finals this March where they will compete against 14 of the world's best teams for a share of the two million US dollar prize pool. Despite enjoying the victory, Immunity team member Matthew Hef Heffron said there was a lot of work to do before the preliminaries. We're back to work for most of us, so we'll be back to work and we just go back to practicing, so we'll just be gaming probably five to seven nights a week, just grinding as hard as we can. Titanfall 2 will be receiving a more developed single player campaign. One of the big criticisms of Respawn's 2014 shooter was that the context and story were delivered in a way that made them little more than background noise. Titanfall 2's lead writer Jesse Stern told Forbes that the game's story will be grounded, dirty, human and real. Stern also said that the game should be launching either late this year or early next. Did anyone know about this? Did I just miss that Titanfall 2 is coming out this year maybe? And will be dirty. Don't put it on iOS. Todd Howard will be honored by his peers when he receives a Lifetime Achievement Award at the Games Developers Conference in San Francisco this March. Howard has been working as a game developer at Bethesda since 1995, but truly made a name for himself when he served as designer, writer, project lead, and leather jacket on the classic RPG, The Elder Scrolls III Morrowind. I'm joined now by Peter Bogdanovich to discuss our final news story. Who? <laughs> Publisher Starbreeze has announced a new game by the creators of Wet and the god-awful Naughty Bear game. It's a procedurally generated asymmetrical horror game called Dead by Daylight. The gameplay will see one player control a psychopathic killer as they hunt down four survivors in a game of cat and mouse. Mr. Bogdanovich, are you looking forward to this game? I can't say I'm excited about the game, yep. but benefit of the doubt, mm -hmm. like it's a, it's a fun concept. If you are into the idea of being a serial killer. Well, asymmetrical multiplayer games are mm -hmm. a fun concept. Like yeah, Evolve was a fun concept yep. that didn't work. Yep. But this, I can't see it being anything more than a Naughty Bear reskin. Yeah. You know, like you're running around murdering innocent like survivors and it's like, Oh, you're so naughty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hope it's I hope it's okay. I mean Starberries have some good games under their publishing wing. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Anything for the creators of Naughty Bear does not sound <laughs> you good. You need to be sceptical of. Wait until I make this guy play it before you out and buy it. Help. All right, moving on now. It's Thing of the Day. Ba, 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 da, ba, da, ba. Thing of the Day. Thing of the Day. YouTuber Kroby Cat found him or herself trapped in the Portal Netherworld after building a contraption in Portal 2's map editor. It's a psychedelic experience neatly summed up by Kroby Cat who describes it as scary when you realize you're face to face with yourself. Ba, 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 da, ba, da, ba. Thing of the day. Thing of the day. I too would be terrified if I came face to face with a crowbar wielding cat. All right, moving on now. It's talk through time where you suggest a topic. Ooh. Me and Mr. Bogdanovich talk through it. Today's talk through comes in from Tristan Chandler, who says, can you talk about the demise of playable demos and shareware releases? Why do you think the industry has moved away from playable demos and releasing first level teasers of games in favor of flashy cinematic trailers? Mm. It's ah, the days of your yeah, I demo miss, disc. I miss the demo disc. I mean, really the demo disc wasn't so much giving you a chance to play a game, it was kind of, giving you awareness that the game exists in the first place. And honestly, it was the only reason I ever bought a magazine. Mm -hmm. Like, I would buy the official Xbox magazine from the Xbox, like, original Xbox, not Xbox One. You're so young. But, <laughs> but like, it would have the, the CD attached, or the DVD attached. Yeah. And I would take it home, and that's how I found games like Death Row, which I probably shouldn't have been playing at that age. But demos. But, like, you know, a brutal kind of 
little demo of a, a sports game. They just work so well, you know. Yeah, it was fantastic. It was like you got a bunch of free games each month. It was yeah. awesome. Like, I played the first level of Broken Sword so many times. <laughs> I knew all the puzzles, and I was like, I don't even need to buy the game, because surely the whole game is just, like, basically this. They anyway, really right? were, like, full-fledged vertical slices. They give you, like, an hour sometimes. And it was great. And I think that was part of the issue. They gave you too much. Yeah. They gave you too much. I mean, the Xbox 360, we looked up some stats, and on the Australian marketplace, mm. across the lifetime, there's 304 still available for download. Yeah. So some would have been taken down across the time, but 304 demos of games, like big games, also arcade games and stuff. And that's demos. just in Australia. And there, would, like, there was a demo for everything. I mean, you could just download the free version and get a look at it. Yeah. Which would, like, was great when the console first came out. People wanted to do that. With the Xbox One, to date, there's only 30 on the Australian marketplace. Yeah. And they're all Zumba Fitness. I mean, the FIFA games are there, and that's really good for people who love FIFA and love to, you know, you get the one team and the one ground and but, stuff like that. But, but do you really need to demo FIFA? <laughs> no, the people who are going to buy FIFA are going to yeah. buy FIFA. They just get to play that one level three weeks before the game comes out. In fact, if you look up on the Xbox website, if you search for demo, you get one page of demos, yeah. and then the second page transitions into DLC packs. Yeah. So yeah. it's like that tag and that just to make <laughs> you buy it. Uh, and, and there's also an interesting point. Uh, there's some data from 2013 that suggests that releasing games can actually, uh, releasing demos of games, sorry, can actually have a detrimental effect on game sales. Average Xbox 360 game sales of 525,000 units after six months uh, when released with a trailer but no demo. On the contrary, a game with both a demo and a trailer will only sell around 250,000. So I think that's <laughs> pretty significant, isn't it's it? It's like pretty like much half. half. Uh, it's it's more. Yeah, it's, it's, I think it's what you said, that you're getting a taste yeah. and you feel like you've had enough. And I think that that's a problem uh, with betas right now running, that you go, oh, I've played a couple of hours of it. I don't feel like I need to play it anymore. EA Access, their vault thing, has that thing where you can play sort of like a few hours of a game. And I know I've played yeah. games and I've gone, oh, well, I don't need to buy it now because I've had the experience. That's a little different because it's a subscription service, <laughs> yeah, right? Totally. You're, paying for, you're paying for a catalogue of games. Except so you get little taste of things, but you're also, it's not what you're paying for. No, but you get, but like, you, you can you get a taste of, get that, yeah, you can probably. get a taste of like Dragon Age Inquisition, which isn't available on the service yet. You do need to buy it. So, yeah. 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 Um, but I think I think demos demos like I said it was marketing yeah. it was a way of raising awareness and I think that's just been replaced with the internet pretty much like, yeah yeah just uh, I mean there are heaps of ways that demos have been replaced betas are a big one yeah Steam releases yeah they do like their free weekends and there are demos on Steam but they're not really pushed but they do free weekends for games yeah. and stuff yeah and then beyond that Twitch you know just watching people play the game or watching you get, IGN play a game earlier watching you play exactly a game you earlier. get like a famous person who you sort of respect and trust like a Nick fa boy fa famous like a Nick boy filmed by acclaimed filmmaker Peter Bogdanovich uh, and and you trust that person's taste and so you're watching someone play that game I mean today yeah I played through a preview build of Firewatch which you will uh, you will be up on our YouTube channel and it's like that would have been the demo that first that first day of Firewatch would have been the Firewatch demo, and they haven't released released that because they know that people are going to play that and watch it online anyway. Yeah, and no spoilers, but I can totally see how someone who just wanted to see what the game was about mm. would get enough from the experience we had, yeah, and be like, okay, I can see what this game is. I don't need to explore it any further, which is interesting because. How is watching someone play 25 minutes of something different to watching, to, to actually playing 25 minutes of something? Yeah, I, I guess the difference would be sort of narrative based games. Something like Firewatch, you can watch me play the story, but it's the story's still going to hook you. Whereas yeah. if you're watching like a shooter, like Battlefront or something, the joy isn't watching that, the joy is actually doing. Picking the, up the controller and doing Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, and, and, the, and Call of Duty is something you just want to have in your hands and play yourself. Yeah. But. It's actually more difficult to do that now, I think, because they don't push demos, they don't promote Yeah, you never hear anything. about them, yeah. It's like you're finding out about games in different ways. Yeah, and you can't. You need to go through the like effort of finding out about the demo, downloading and installing it and playing it, whereas yeah. it's actually way easier to just click on a YouTube link on a website and just watch someone already have done that for you and give you their opinion and possibly entertain you as well. And access it for free over buying a magazine with a disc exactly. taped to the front of it. Yeah. Yeah. Totally true. And also, where are you going to put those discs? They just become part of the collection again. Yeah, yeah, that's DVDs true. DVDs in the corner, yep. box in the garage. Don't need it. Don't need Don't it need at it. all. All right, that's it for the talk through. Uh, let us know if you guys miss demos. Do you did you like having those old discs? Do you still play demos, uh, or is it something that you find has been filled by something else? Let us know in the comments. And while you're there, suggest a talk through for tomorrow. And also while you're there, check out Good Game 
on Facebook, YouTube, and iView. Want to meet fellow Pocketeers? Then join the Pocketeers Facebook group and Steam group. You can follow Good Game on Twitter at Good Game TV. Follow Pocket at Nick Boy at Pierre and at GG Edit Monkey. There are links to everything I just said in the description below. Today's thing of the day graphic was made by Andrew Gibbons. Thank you, Andrew. On your Gibbo. Until tomorrow, Nick Boy out. Pierre out. Bogdanovich. Oh, Mr. Bogdanovich. 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 Bogdanovich.